In this video, I'm going to look at limestone. So we're going to look at what it is, how it's obtained, some of its reactions, and finally, what it's used for. So what is limestone? Well, it's essentially the chemical calcium carbonate, which contains the calcium 2 plus ion and the carbonate ion, which has the formula CO3 2 minus. So how do we get limestone? Well, these two ions here are very, very strongly attracted towards each other, and that makes calcium carbonate a very, very stable substance. And so stable that it just exists or occurs in the ground. So how do we get limestone? We dig it out of the ground by quarrying. Now, even though limestone or calcium carbonate is a very stable substance, there are a couple of reactions that it will perform. So the first of these reactions is the thermal decomposition reaction. So you can see I've written up on the board there, CaCO3 solid turning into something. So how are we going to get this reaction to take place? Well, the clue is at the start of the name of the reaction, we need to apply heat. So thermal means heat. But not just any old heat, it needs to be a very, very high temperature. So what's it going to do under high temperature? It's going to decompose, it's going to break down. And what it does is it produces a gas and a solid. I'm sure you can work out what the gas is. It's carbon dioxide. So what's left over? Well, we've still got the calcium and we've got one oxygen left. So we would form calcium oxide and that's a solid. So why do we need to know this? Well, we need to know that the calcium oxide that's produced by this reaction has got some uses and we'll come on to those later on. The second reaction that we need to look at is the reaction of calcium carbonate with acids. So you can see I've already written up the beginnings of the equations that we're going to look at. So calcium carbonate solid is common to all three, but I'm varying the acids. So we use an aqueous hydrochloric acid, nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So in general terms, what do we get when we react an acid? with a carbonate and it makes a salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. So in each of these three equations we need three products salt, water and carbon dioxide. The water and CO2 is common to all three. The only problem is working out what the salt is. So if you want to have a go at that and then I'll go through the answers. So there's the first equation. Now we need to go back to this because it's not balanced, but I just want to explain why it's CaCl2 and not CaCl or Ca2Cl. So you can see I've written up some numbers in red here. Now these are the charges of the ions that make up these chemicals. Now I've already mentioned that the calcium carbonate is made from the Ca2 plus ion and the carbonate ion, which is 2 minus. Hydrochloric acid contains the H plus ion and the chloride ion. So that's one plus and one minus. So if we think about the charges in the salt, we've got two plus still for the calcium ion. But remember these are one minus. And so when we combine the two ions together, we need the overall charge to cancel. So because that's two plus, we need two of these one minuses. So it's CaCl2. So to balance this equation, we need some more HCl. We've got two chlorines here and only one there. So a two in front of the HCl will sort that equation out. So there's the unbalanced equation for the second example. So this time we're making the salt calcium nitrate. And of course we get water and CO2. 
Can't remember if I named this salt. That's calcium chloride, by the way. So you can see again, I've written the charges up of the ions present in the acid. So H is one plus still. The nitrate ion is NO3 one minus. So if we're marrying together a two plus with a one minus, you can see we need two of the one minus ions. And because this is made from more than one atom, we need to wrap it in a bracket. So to balance it, we've got two nitrates essentially. The two in front of the acid will sort it out. And the final equation now, so we've got sulfuric acid. Its ions are one plus with the sulfate ion is SO4, two minus. And you can see the formula of the acid reflects that because it's H2SO4, because we need two of the H pluses for every SO4 two minus ion. So the salt that's produced will be calcium sulfate. Again, we get water and CO2. So think about the charges in here. We've got two plus, two minus, and so one of each is enough to sort out the overall charge. And so this equation is actually already balanced. So if we finish with the uses of limestone now, you can see I've written one up on the board straight away. Limestone, because it's such a stable, strong substance, it's actually used as a building material. But if you think about what we've just done, the reaction with acids, we've got a bit of a problem. If you've got acid rain falling and it lands on a building or a statue or anything made from limestone, it's going to react with it. It's going to take a while, but it will eventually wear it away. If you remember back to a previous slide, I said that would come back to calcium oxide. Well, we're going to look at it now. So if you remember, calcium oxide is one of the products of the thermal decomposition of limestone. The calcium oxide itself has got some uses. So one of the wide scale uses of calcium oxide is to react it with water to make the chemical calcium hydroxide. So there you've got the word equation and the balanced symbol equation for that reaction. And just a quick explanation of the formula of calcium hydroxide. Ca2 plus, the hydroxide ion is one minus. So you need two of these one minus ions for every calcium two plus ion. You can see there I've written up that calcium hydroxide is actually an alkali. All metal hydroxides are alkalis, but calcium hydroxide is very, very useful when it comes to treating fields, farmers' fields, that are too acidic. So the calcium hydroxide will neutralise the acidic soil. Obviously, you've got to be very careful. You don't put too much calcium hydroxide on, otherwise you could make the field too alkaline, and some crops wouldn't like that either worth saying that you could of course put powdered calcium carbonate straight onto the fields to neutralize the acid but calcium hydroxide works much faster so that's the preferred chemical so the calcium hydroxide that we've just made in this reaction as well as being used to neutralize acidic soil it's also used to test for carbon dioxide gas so I've got the beginnings of the word equation on the board now Calcium hydroxide reacts with carbon dioxide to make calcium carbonate and water. And you can see on the board there, I've got the symbol equation for the reaction. CaOH twice plus CO2 makes CaCO3 and H2O. The calcium hydroxide would typically be dissolved in water. So we call this lime water and... You can see there, it's, we've said already, it's used as a test for CO2. And that's because the calcium carbonate that's produced is insoluble. And so your test tube would go cloudy. So this is clear. This is totally clear solution. You bubble the carbon dioxide through and it forms the insoluble substance calcium carbonate. And so you get this cloudiness appearing in the test tube 
which confirms that CO2 must have been passed through the, the lime water. Now as well as the limestone itself being used as a building material, you can also make other building materials from limestone, from calcium carbonate. If you heat limestone in a kiln with powdered clay, you can make the building material cement. You can mix cement with sand and water and that makes the building material that we call mortar. Now this diagram here is my attempt at a brick wall. The mortar is actually the substance that you use to sort of stick these bricks together. Instead of mixing cement with sand and water, you mix it with sand and a mixture of water and gravel, so little stones. And you can see I've got the word aggregate there. That's the name we give to a mixture of water and gravel. Anyway, if we mix these together with the cement, we make concrete. We'll just finish with this summary diagram. So limestone is calcium carbonate, CaCO3. It can be thermally decomposed, so if you heat it up very, very strongly, it breaks down to make calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. We'll come back to the calcium oxide in a moment. Calcium carbonate also reacts with acids to make salt and water and carbon dioxide. Limestone itself can be used as a building material, very strong, very stable substance. But beware, acid rain will break it down because it reacts with acids to form salt water and CO2. Limestone can be heated in a kiln to make cement. And then if you mix that cement with sand and water, you make mortar and that's used to glue the bricks together. If you mix the cement with sand, water and gravel, remember that's called aggregate, that makes concrete. And finally, that little bit of extra information about calcium oxide. If you react calcium oxide with water, you make the alkali, calcium hydroxide. So because this is an alkali, we can use it to treat acidic soil and neutralize the acidic soil. But be careful you don't add too much, otherwise you'll make the soil too alkaline. And calcium hydroxide mixed with water is what we call lime water. It's used to test for CO2, carbon dioxide, because when you bubble carbon dioxide through a solution of calcium hydroxide, you make the insoluble substance calcium carbonate, and so you would see cloudiness appearing in your test tube.